Hey, welcome. So glad you're here. I'm Hagar. We're playing today with the energy of sattva, which is a Sanskrit word that is derived from the root sat, which means beingness or being or truth or existence. It's the one of the three energies of nature, according to the yoga tradition, one of the three gunas, the core qualities of the natural world of our bodies. The other two, there's previous two videos that you can check out. One is tamas, which is the heavy, grounded, in a way, dark and restful energy. And the other one is rajas, which is the energizing, the dynamic, the activating energy in our system. Sattva is sometimes thought of, it's sometimes translated as harmonious or pure. And in a way, how I like to think about it is it's the, it's the integrated, it's the integrated self. It's when we're able to integrate not only the dynamic and the restful, not only the activating and the, and the settling, but also all the different experiences that we have in our lives that in one way or another turn on or turn off the other qualities, the energies in our lives and the experiences in our lives that take us um, off balance, which is, you know, a lot of life is moving in, <laughs> moving through the waves, through the ups and downs. So sattva is the invitation not to calm the waves necessarily, although some will interpret it this way, but sattva in a way is our ability to integrate the different places, the different experiences, the different, um, the different energies through the ups and downs of the waves of life. And so let's see how it feels in our bodies. Go ahead and stand at the top of your mat with your feet as wide as your hips, with your feet parallel and feel the ground underneath you. Bring your left hand over your heart and your right hand over your belly so that you are beginning the practice giving yourself the message that you are here for yourself, that no matter what you're going through right now, no matter how challenging the world around us is, no matter how excited or how down you feel about things, that you are here for yourself. You're here to hold space for yourself and for your experience. And bring attention to your breath. Let it move through you and bring awareness to the way that it moves through you. And you can begin to engage in a conversation with the breath, in an engagement with the breath by toning the back of the throat and breathing ujjayi breath so that the breath makes this resonant sound. You can breathe a little bit more deeply into your belly. in and out, up and down. Listen to your breath so that you can weave yourself into this moment. And with the next exhalation, release your arms by your sides and inhale, reach your arms up high. As you exhale, bend your knees and bring your forearms to your thighs and cross one wrist in front of the other so that your hands, the opposite hands, comes to the inside of a knee. With your knees, push into the hands as you push with your hands out into the knees so that you're creating an engagement and an integration of different parts, right? There's a crossing that's happening and there's a moving in and out at the same time so that you are creating not necessarily balance because balance is not always achievable and we don't always necessarily need balance. But maybe what we want is to be able to, again, I, I'll use this word a lot, integrate. Deep breath in and keep your right hand on that inside of your left knee and with an exhalation with your left arm up towards the sky so you're going into a little twist here as your hand and your knee press into each other with your left hip bone and the left side of your ribs pull in through the front of your body towards the right side and with your sternum with your breastbone with your chest turn up 
through the right side towards the sky. Slow breath in to elongate your spine. Slow breath out to turn your chest up a little bit more with the resistance of the hip and the rib on the left side moving towards the right. Inhale and come back to center so your left forearm comes to your left thigh. Left hand to the inside of your right knee and exhale with your right arm up towards the sky. With the hand and the knee keep pressing into the center, into each other. With the right ASIS, the front of your hip bone, the anterior, superior, iliac spine, pull in towards the uh, left side. And with the left side of the ribs, pull in towards the right side. Sorry, with the right side of the ribs, pull in towards the left. And exhale, turn your chest up towards the sky. I'm mirroring you, so I got a little confused. Slow breath in. Lengthen your spine, hips back. Crown of the head towards the front of the mat, the front of your room, wherever you're facing, and turn your chest up towards the sky a little bit more. Back to center as you inhale. Both hands on the inside of your knees. And then exhale, let your belly rest on your thighs and fold forward, fingertips to the floor, knees still bent. Just let your belly rest on your thighs. Crown of the head towards the earth, balls of the feet grounded, heels pulled towards the back of your mat. Inhale deeply. And exhale slowly. Hips back, chest forward as you inhale, look forward, halfway up. Exhale, you can stretch your legs straight if that feels good for you or keep your knees bent and fold back in. If putting your hands on the floor in this position is not a possibility, you can always put your hands on a, a block or a stool. Inhale, look forward, halfway up, hips back, chest forward. And exhale, fold back in. And let's do that one more time. Inhale, look forward, hips back, chest forward. Exhale, slowly fold back in. Ground through the legs. Inhale, reach your arms up to the sky. Bend your knees on your way up. Circle the arms up. And exhale, slowly lower your hands through the front of your face and to the front of your heart. And then release your arms and separate your feet wide apart. Take a deep breath in, reach your arms up high. And exhale, fold forward. You can bend your knees again on your way down or fold forward with your legs straight. Prasarda Padottanasana. Inhale, look forward, halfway up as you pull your heels energetically back so you're active and dynamic, but also grounded and listening and present. Turn your left toes out. Turn your, keep your right foot where it is and bend the left knee. Now walk your hands away from your left foot. Press your hands into the floor. Keep your left hand where it is and bring your right hand to the inside of your left knee from underneath your um, left arm. So right hand to the inside of the left knee. And with your hand and your knee, press into each other. Again, that weaving together of sides, of parts, this integration. Not trying to purify, not trying to balance it necessarily, but working on bringing things together, bringing things into relationship. And relationships, in order to keep them healthy, are going to need attention, they're going to need listening, they're going to need to, we're going to need to be able to say what we have to say. So it's complex. Slowly bring your right hand back to the um, floor and then walk your hands through the front. Turn your left toes out, turn your right toes in and walk your hands to the right. Bend the right knee and press both of your feet into the earth, connecting to the earth. Connect to where you are. So sattva is not necessarily going to work as making things better, but it's an invitation to be with where you are, to be present with yourself, to weave yourself into the moment, and to not force it. Now weave the left hand underneath the right arm, 
so that the left hand goes to the inside of your right knee and with the knee and the hand press a little bit into each other so you're creating strength and connection it's not forceful but it is active it's not dynamic in a way that burns you out but it certainly is working Keep breathing as you push your hands and your knees into each other and your feet ground into the earth. And then slowly bring your right hand, your left hand, my goodness, back up and turn your right toes in as you walk your hands towards the center and fold back into the space, to the center. Sapphire is our ability to center ourselves and the ability for our center to keep moving fluidly. So we're not stuck. Round through the legs, inhale, reach your arms out and all the way up. You can bend your knees on the way up. Come up and exhale, bring your hands together in front of your heart. Let's keep the feet wide. Deep breath and reach your arms up. Turn your left toes out and exhale. Bring your left forearm to your left thigh and circle the right arm in front of you and then up and over your head. So it's a modified version of Parjva Konasana. Bend deep into your left knee as you push your left foot into the floor. Draw the front of your hip bones, the ASISS, towards each other, the side of the ribs towards each other as you turn your chest, your breastbone, your your sternum up towards the sky as you breathe, press into both of your feet and stretch long through the whole right side of your body. Slow breath in. Use the weight on your left forearm, push down into it to create actually a lift in the left ribs, in the left side of your body. Inhale, come up and stretch your left leg straight. Turn your left toes in. Exhale, turn your right toes out and bring your right forearm to your right thigh as you stretch the left arm through the front of your face and then up and over your head and breathe slowly as you root down with both of your feet into the earth. Where are you right now? What's happening in your life? What's happening in your body? Can you show up to yourself? Can you be here? Can you breathe into the experience? Both of the feet rooted as a rootedness into where we are so that where we are, can actually grow and shift and change and move and morph and transform. Use the left forearm, sorry, right forearm, blah, on the right thigh. Push it down to create a lift in the right side of the ribs and extend long through the left side of your body, both feet grounded, breath deep and full and slow so that again, you're present with yourself, you're present with prana, you're present with your life force. Turn your chest up towards the sky as you drop the front of both hips towards each other, the sides of the ribs and the front of the body towards the center and keep turning the chest up. Inhale, come up, stretch your right leg straight, turn your right toes in and bring your legs towards each other and shake it out a little bit. Shake your legs, shake your wrists, shake your hips a little bit. Stand on your right leg. We're gonna lift your, the left leg up into Vrikshasana, tree pose. Bring your foot to the inner thigh, bring your hands together in front of your heart and press the foot and the thigh into each other so that you're finding center. And again, it's not the same amount, it's not balanced, it's not exactly equal, but it's bringing what's needed where it's needed. And there's gonna be a wavering sometimes, you can reach your arms up towards the sky. And then sometimes we have to show up to the wavering, we have to show up to the instability of life and find ourselves a place to move with the instability. Find a way that we can maybe even learn how to fall in moments where life throws us off our game. Deep breath in. Exhale, release your arms and bring your foot down. Ground into your left foot. Lift your right foot up, Vrikshasana, tree pose, foot and thigh press into each other, hands together in front of your heart to start. And again, how much do you need to press with your foot and how much do you need to press with your thigh? You're gonna feel into it. 
draw the sides of the hips towards the center. Is there one of, does one of your hip bones need to move more toward the other? Where are you? Where is the energy? How is it distributed? And what do you need more of right now? You can reach your arms up towards the sky. What do you need less? Where do you need to put a little less attention in your life in order for things to flow, in order for, not, for yourself to not be stuck somewhere? Slow breath. So harmony isn't, um, it doesn't have to be a goal because sometimes it, cause it's not always going to be harmonious, right? But again, integration, into, how do we integrate the dissonance, the discord, the discomfort, right? How do we integrate? Maybe some of us are not, um, maybe some of us, for some of us healing isn't possible. So how do we integrate the space that we're in? Maybe you're chronically ill. I don't know what your life is like. So how do you integrate where you are in a way that honors life in all its forms. Deep breath in. Release your arms as you exhale and release your right foot down to the floor. We're going to bring your left foot to the outside of the right knee and flex the foot. So the toes are spread. There's an engagement in the left foot right now. Bend your right knee and reach your hips back. And we're going to bring the hands all the way down to the floor. But if that's not what's going to happen for your body, you can put your hands on a wall or on a couch, or on a table, or lower it down a little further into a stool, or come with me to the floor, whatever feels appropriate for where you are, and put your right hand on the ball of the left foot and press them a little bit into each other. Slow breath as your knee bends, as you fold in, as you breathe. the pressing of the foot and the hand into each other it's an invitation to into integration into weaving together the parts of you ground through the legs and slowly come up before you release the left leg come up and then release the leg it's just a little um, easier and gentler on your knee Stand on your left leg and bring your right foot outside of your left knee. Breathe deeply. Bend the left knee and reach your hips back and your chest forward. And again, put your hands where you can. Wall, table, couch, chair, block, stool, or floor. And then hand, left hand to the ball of the right foot and let them press into each other to create integration and an openness. Now keep the toes on your left foot active. Draw the tips of your toes towards the knee and with the inner edge of your foot, so if you can see the sole of your foot, you wanna make sure that the inner edge of your right foot right now presses towards the left side of the mat, the left side of the room. Breathe slowly here. Foot and hand press into each other, spine is long, hips are back, left is bent. And then ground through the left foot, first come up and then release the leg or fall out of it and shake it out. Go ahead and bring yourself down into a seated position, <laughs> maybe through a little bit of a dance. And we're going to bring the left foot right now. We're going to bend the right knee, bring the right foot in, and bring your left foot outside of your right knee to the floor. Now, this is a pretty big stretch for the hips and lower back. So if you find yourself woo, rounded and leaning back like that, please put a blanket or a block or something to lift yourself up, a pillow underneath your hips so you can be more elevated. We want to make sure that the spine is long here. Root into the inner edge of your left foot and bring your left hand behind you. Reach your right arm up, deep breath in. And exhale, bring your right elbow outside of your left knee, left thigh, as you turn your chest to the left. Now we're starting a lot, you've probably noticed, because I got all confused so many times. Starting, we're trying to do each of the poses first on the left side and then on the right because our tendency is to usually start on the right side. So sattva 
is the ability to bring a little bit more of the other side. So if maybe there's even something in your life, maybe an argument, maybe something where you're only seeing things from one perspective or you're, all, you're always putting the weight, leaning more to one side, which is okay. We all have our opinions and the things we care about. That's mwah, excellent. I'm not speaking against it. Ground your hips and lengthen your spine as you turn to the left. But maybe there's like an argument, maybe there's some discord in the world where you want to start to look a little bit and more than just one perspective so that you're more informed because the story is hardly ever just right to one side hardly ever sometimes it is <laughs> lengthen your spine and turn your chest a little bit more to the left back to center as you inhale and we're going to switch sides so the left foot towards the right hip left knee bent right knee bent right foot to the floor you can pick your hips up a little bit and um, take your left hip to the left to ground your right hip down a little bit more right hand behind your left arm up deep breath in and exhale bring your left elbow outside of your right leg outside of your right knee now with your elbow with your upper arm pull the right knee toward the left side of your chest and with your chest turn to the right as your chest turns to the right though, draw the front of the hip bone, the, um, the right ASIS, and the right side of the ribs toward the left. So as you're twisting to the left, turn the left side of the body a little bit more to the right. So you're creating a little bit of a contrast, again, to give yourself a more integrated perspective, a more, a more broad way of seeing, thinking, um, feeling even right so that your knowledge expands so that you be so that you become more wise because you're not just stuck in one way of doing things in one perspective and one side is right and the other one is wrong this helps us shift from a black or white perspective on life so that sattva in a way even though it's sometimes so overly simplified in the yoga tradition it's like this is like the like the good way sattva is a complex way it's the integrated so it's a woven together tapestry of life where we're including the different aspects of ourselves and even of each other keep your spine long deep breath ground your hips exhale turn your chest more to the right and then bring yourself back to center inhale still strong as you come out of the pose so that your back is safe and then stretch your legs forward and shake them out a little bit. Come to lie on your back. Doesn't that sound good right now? <laughs> Bring your knees into your chest. Give yourself a really sweet hug. If it feels good, you can stretch your legs straight for just one moment and hold the outer edges of your feet. Maybe they're not going to go all the way straight. Maybe you'll keep them bent. But if you want a little bit of a stretch for your hamstrings before you release, it's a good way to go. And stretch your feet into your hands as you pull on the feet down into the hips and tilt your pubic bone more towards the floor so that you're creating a bit of a curve in your lower back. Bend your knees again and hug your knees into your chest. And then relax your arms and relax your legs and take a moment here to be in this restful position, in this restful space where you allow the process to assimilate. And stay here for as long as you can, okay? I will see you soon. If you liked this video, if it felt good, if it was interesting, put a like on it. Subscribe to our channel. There's, there's more happening here. And subscribe to our mailing list because you're gonna get deeply evocative, meaningful, inspiring messages and our free guide to spark inspiration in your life. Okay, so make sure you do that. I'll leave a link in the description of the video and I really appreciate you being here. Thank you. Namaste.